Have you ever heard that interest rates go down during election years? Well, that is absolutely not the case when you look at the historical trends. We're gonna dive into that myth and two others that are a little bit unique, not the common ones. We're gonna dive into those today and we're gonna make sure that you are in the know and don't get fooled by some of these myths. What's up, guys? I'm Jeremy Kane with eXp Realty. Thank you so much for tuning in today. It means so much to me that you hop on here. I actually just returned from Ohio uh, for an aunt's funeral, and it was really cool to hear all of my cousins and aunts and uncles talk about watching these videos. Now, for you Ohio people, throw me some likes and, and let's, uh, let's include you in this uh, Denver in the Suburbs real estate update. But that's that. So like, comment, subscribe, share this with somebody. If you know somebody, no matter if you're in Denver or not, that's in, you know, looking into buying a home or whatever, uh, share this video with them. That helps me grow. And that's exactly what I like to uh, spread the word to my family members or anyone who's looking to buy or sell real estate. So let's kind of get into the nitty gritty here as we uh, start this video. So first and foremost, we're going to dive right in. I'm not going to keep it from you. The election cycle. And we're going to start. I did just a simple Google search uh, and found first and foremost, the Fed rate, right? This is more tied to the economy, more tied to the short term rate. We all know, especially all you viewers, that the Fed rate does not directly correlate into the mortgage 30 year interest rates that we kind of talk about more so on the real estate side. So first and foremost, the Fed rate. And I just looked at, you know, the Fed rate over the last, literally this graph sitting in front of me goes back to 1956. We won't go quite that far, but literally in 2020, the Fed rate went down a point and a half. In 2016, it went up a quarter point. In 2012, it didn't move at all. In 2008, it went down four points. In 2004, it went up 1.25 points. In 2000, it went up a point. So as you can see, we're all over the board. If I have this uh, uh, image on the screen, like right here, uh, you would notice that there's absolutely no trend with the Fed rate. So let me slide on over and take a look at the mortgage interest rates, right? Um, and we'll start again. 2020, they went up 0.03%. 2016, they went up 0.45%. Uh, in uh, 2012, they went up 0.04%. And that was the starting rate of the year and the ending rate of the year. So this is right around election. 0.8% um, uh, in 2008, up. 0.02% in 2004 and down 0.37%. Now, there is definitely some fluctuation there. 0.8% is a big number from 6.09 to 5.29. Um, and actually the biggest on here. Uh, but that's that's really it. And you also see, you know, rates going up 0.45%. 3 point or 0.58 in 1980 was the biggest one. So as you can see, it is all over the board. There's no direct correlation to a presidential election year and interest rates falling. So as the trend kind of continues here, uh, just because we're in an election year and election cycle, uh, the incumbent president does not have you know control of the mortgage interest rates. I will tell you that this website did say in 2020, 2012, 2004, and 96, when we did have an incumbent president running again, which it looks or appears to be the plan for the Democratic Party right now, um, the rates did not swing massively. So those bigger swings were not in um, years where there was an incumbent president trying to uh, get reelected, whether it's up or down or whatever. That's that's what the data says here. So um, that is absolutely the case. That's mygatormortgage.com if you want to check that uh, table out. So those are the two rate you know sheets that I kind of looked at. And ultimately, the data is all over the place. I, I took a statistics class when I was a psychology major, and that tells me that there's no correlation to an election year and not only the mortgage rate, but also the Fed rate, which we covered. So if you're sitting on the sidelines and you're allowing that interest rate to kind of dictate your plan, don't plan on the interest rate crashing out here uh, this year due to the presidential election. Sorry to burst your bubble. Um, but as we've, you know, we're now into March, we've seen quite the uh, uh, interest rate um, 
uptick, you know, against what other people were saying. So hopefully um, once the Fed starts cutting those rates, we'll see them come down, but I'm not a lender. So talk to a lender about that. Next myth that I want to talk about, and this is right in line with the interest rate conversation we just had, is that at the best time to buy a home is when interest rates are low. And this, I don't think, couldn't be further from the truth, at least in our market right? You do gain a little bit of affordability, but ultimately we need to pull back from watching that interest rate. I understand that information is traveling so quickly. You have it at the palm of your hand right now. However, if you're waiting to buy a home for interest rates to come down, you are costing yourself money, especially right now in this market, because we saw a massive decrease in demand, which I'll cover in the March market update um, in February because those interest rates are higher. So we're kind of on a roller coaster if we're talking about the current market right now. And time after time, I'm seeing seller concessions to help buy down those rates artificially. I mean, right, you have the prime rate and they're buying down the rate um, into areas where they'd be, you know, at least consumable for that first time home buyer and those buyers. So the honest truth is that rate that's being reported, first and foremost, it isn't your rate because that's perfect credit score, 20% down, blah, blah, blah. Um, however, that usually isn't the rate that even anyone pays with maybe subpar credit or whatever, because they're getting those buy downs, they're using the seller credits, lenders are offering credits, and they're doing all kinds of things to kind of mitigate to help your affordability there. So um, buying a home, when the interest rates do come down, when the sellers are not giving concessions and there's more competition, more demand coming to the market is actually not the right thing to do, in my opinion. Certainly, if you have to do it, do it. We want to get you into home ownership. However, if you have the choice to buy at a maybe stagnant or higher interest rate with a little bit less competition, then that's the answer, right? Because maybe you get that rate bought down where it's going to drop to anyways. You say, hey, I'm not buying a house till so the interest rates are at six. Well, you could buy that rate down pretty close to six. And maybe once it does come down, if it does come down, if you're not at that six or you're not in the fives, you can refinance and get that rate to where it wants to be. And so that's the biggest thing I want people to hear is it's almost better to go shopping in a higher interest rate market with less demand, especially with tighter inventory, because once there's once there's higher demand and tighter inventory, which we will eventually see probably, then that's gonna lead for less opportunity for you as a buyer. So that's that myth that I just wanna squash. And the honest truth is, if you are considering buying, I don't care what state you're in, what country you're in, if you're watching this video right now and you are considering buying any time in the future, book a consultation with me and I would be happy to build a plan for you, right? Because a lot of times we feel like we have to do this alone, kind of our credits are secret and we, we kind of do it how we want to. We're, we're YouTube warriors and we're figuring it out. That's no way to go. Let's sit down. Let's have a conversation. I can help you even if you're not in the Colorado market, get into home ownership. So that's myth number two. Myth number three is the famous, you know, real estate is the best investment, guaranteed return, so on. You and I both know the only thing that's guaranteed, well, I don't really know that anything's guaranteed, right? Life's short. So um, understand that the only piece of real estate and to make real estate more um, soluble and lucrative for you, the thing you need to not do is have to sell when the market is down or have to access that equity when the market is down or the interest rates are up, right? Because there is no guarantees in life, like I said, and you never know, right? You can move somebody in there that takes advantage of the rental laws and never pays you rent, right? We're, we're experiencing a ton of rental laws coming into effect in Denver. So the key is making sure you know where you're investing your money, where, what location, but you'll never know, right? Someone could look amazing on paper and have a complete breakdown and trash your house and and nothing is guaranteed in that right it's still a risk however you do have an asset that will do its best to maintain the value but let me stop you right here guaranteed return on investment is not real in any investment right certainly there's higher risk and lower risk moderate risk whatever but there's no guaranteed return right if there was a guaranteed return on investment everybody would be throwing their money in those areas. It's all about diversification and making sure 
that you are comfortable and that these investments aren't something that you need to cash flow or you can't pay your bills, right? And so as we go, especially as a mom and pop investor, especially as you're getting started, there absolutely is no guarantee. I just got off the phone with a client who waited two or three months while he got his uh, his condo rented for to the right tenant for the right amount. And he's been paying double mortgage since he bought his house in December, right? Nothing wrong with that. He budgeted for it. He said he budgeted perfectly, which doesn't surprise me with my guy. But um, that's exactly what you need to understand is there is absolutely no guarantee, right? Especially when it comes to human beings living in homes, doing the thing. So those are the three myths that I kind of want to talk about. Even real estate agents float these things out there as fact. Um, a ton of people, you know, especially, you know, people that are naysayers on the market and are saying, wait to do this, wait to do that, or throwing these myths out. So what are they again? Interest rates have no, you know, commonality of going down or up during a presidential election cycle. The one commonality that, that we did see is when an incumbent president was coming in, the interest rates actually stay pretty stable. Don't go up or down a ton. We'll see if that's the case this year. Um, the second myth is obviously people waiting to buy. The best time to buy is when interest rates are low. Absolutely not the case, as we discussed. And then obviously real estate is not a guaranteed investment. It requires a little more time, a little more energy than that stock account. Certainly you can watch it from the keyboard, but you can't do that with a home. It needs to be managed, needs to be maintained, needs to be updated. Um, and so that is absolutely the case and people and humans are involved. So guarantees are, are always a little bit difficult. Now, over time, the solid investment, the appreciation gain, all of those things are a thing, but someone comes in and burns it down. It's not a very good investment. It breaks to you. So hope you guys like this one. The three myths, I hope they're more unique than you know the common, you don't need 20% down, blah, blah, blah. So like, comment, subscribe, share this video with somebody you know, it's looking to get in market and let's have a conversation. Look forward to connecting. 303-210-0378. Uh, we'll talk to you soon.